This is the instructional training video for the Fast Responder Sternal Intraosseous Device, developed by Ping Medical of Richmond, British Columbia, Canada. The Fast Responder is a sternal intraosseous device intended for intraosseous infusion as an alternative to intravenous access to facilitate emergency resuscitation through the use of drugs and fluids. The Fast Responder Sternal Intraosseous Device is indicated for use in establishing a sternal intraosseous access route in adult and adolescent patients that are 12 years of age or older who require vascular access of drugs and fluids to facilitate emergency resuscitation. The Fast Responder is not intended to remain in the patient for more than 24 hours. The designated insertion site is the manubrium, 15 millimeters below the suprasternal notch. There are no known contraindications. There are a number of precautions. The fast responder is designed to penetrate 6 millimeters into the manubrium. Qualified professionals should determine if there are any appropriate or necessary exceptions, either inclusions or exclusions, to the criterion for patients to be 12 years of age or older. The following conditions may impair function of the device. Compromised skin over the insertion site such as trauma, infection, or severe burns. Fracture of the sternum or vascular injury, which may compromise the integrity of the manubrium or its vascularization. Midline sternotomy scars. Morbidly obese patients. Safety in patients with severe osteoporosis has not been proven. Insertion in sites other than the manubrium may result in ineffective infusion and or serious injury to the patient. Reuse of the fast responder is not recommended due to the potential of cross-contamination, which may lead to serious injury. Do not insert fingers into the open end of the device due to the potential for needle stick. The principal focus of this video is to provide the user a protocol for use of the fast responder that ensures maximum success for the deployment of this precision intraosseous device. The training protocols in this video are not intended as a substitute for local policies, procedures, or protocols established by the provider's medical direction and control. This training video establishes the most effective method for deployment of the fast responder sternal intraosseous device. If the provider follows the procedures demonstrated, the likelihood of a successful deployment is maximized. Deviation from the procedure demonstrated here can decrease the potential for a successful deployment of the fast responder device. It is strongly recommended the provider master the skills demonstrated in this video before any effort is made to alter what is taught here by adopting a specific provider technique. The fast responder is designed for rapid sternal intraosseous access for the purpose of introducing fluids and medications directly into the marrow of the manubrium. The fast responder establishes a non-collapsible entry point into the systemic venous system. The device is designed to completely remove guesswork providing engineered precision in penetration of the patient's hard cortical bone, leaving behind an embedded infusion tube that is intended to be connected to standard fluid options. The fast responder is the only intraosseous device designed to operate in this fashion and is therefore deployable under limited visibility, in moving vehicles, and in otherwise less than favorable or austere environments. The fast responder has been designed so that it cannot be overdeployed penetrating the manubrium and entering the anterior mediastinum. This engineering gives the provider assurance that safe and effective intraosseous access is available by following and mastering a simple deployment protocol. Before we begin, let's review the fast responder packaging and the component parts of the device. The fast responder will be delivered to the responder in a box similar to this. The packaging has been designed to maximize shelf life and expedite inventory management. Each fast responder box clearly identifies the device as a sternal intraosseous device. The fast responder cannot be used for tibia or humeral head insertions, only for sternal insertions. Additionally, each fast responder box carries an expiration date, and all providers should note this date. Expired devices should not be used and should be removed immediately from inventory and replaced. Expired devices can be used for training on artificial training devices or cadaveric insertions only. Never for live insertions. Expired devices can be returned to Ping Medical at the shipper's expense at the address found on each box, and Ping Medical will dispose of them properly and in accordance with local protocols. 
Once removed from the outer box, the fast responder is packaged in a sterile, sealed, molded plastic, crush-resistant package designed to protect the device during shipping, storage, and movement. It is not recommended that providers remove the fast responder from the outer box and carry it in this exposed configuration. The optimal sterile and protective configuration is as shipped to the end user. It is not advisable to package the fast responder using any other configuration, as destruction of the sterile barrier may occur. The markings of the sterile crush-resistant packaging, again, clearly denote that the device is for sternal use only. Additionally, you can find the lot number and the expiration date next to the international symbol, shown here as an hourglass symbol. The first thing you will notice is two compact folded paper sets of fast responder instructions. The reason for two sets of identical instructions is to accommodate 11 different languages. The fast responder is a favorite in many countries throughout North America and Europe. The responder opens the sterile barrier packaging simply by lifting the corner of the Tyvek cover and pulling back to expose the fast responder device. Removed from all packaging, the fast responder has several component pieces the provider should become familiar with. First is the handle itself. The handle has been ergonomically designed to prevent slipping in the provider's hands and to allow for rapid visual alignment to the sternal notch of the patient. Even under periods of limited visibility, the provider can orient the device to the sternal notch and accurately deploy the fast responder if absolutely necessary. Next is the locking pin, which prevents the device from accidental deployment while unpackaged. This is the target foot, the sternal notch indicator in the target foot, and the adhesive liner covering the adhesive surface of the target foot. This portion of the device is called the needle cover and the dark blue ring inside of the needle cover is called the target foot release ring. With the locking pin removed and the adhesive liner exposed, you can see other important components of the fast responder device. If you slightly depress the target foot, you will see four needles appear through the base of the target foot. These needles do the important work of the fast responder. These needles are called bone probes. They are hollow, beveled, surgical steel needles that penetrate the tissue and gauge the depth of the tissue to the surface of the manubrium. Their function is to feed back to the patented inner workings of the fast responder to let the device know it is ready for the application of user-applied force to drive the stylet into the cortical bone of the manubrium. What you see here is the hollow tip of the infusion tube and the solid piercing tip of the stylet. While understanding the component parts of the fast responder is not critical to a successful deployment of the device, it does help, especially as we progress through the steps of the deployment sequence. Refer to local anesthetic and aseptic protocols prior to administering the following fast responder protocol. Maximum success with the fast responder is achieved by following a relatively simple protocol. We call it the six P's. Position, placement, push, pause, pull back, and prepare. The position element of the deployment sequence carries two focus points. The first is the position of the patient before attempting to deploy the fast responder into the patient. It is important that the patient be positioned as flat as possible before the provider attempts to deploy the fast responder. This is due to the requirement for the on-axis application of user-applied force to deploy the device and the requirement to be perpendicular to the manubrium at all times during the deployment sequence. If the patient is on a hospital bed, lower the back of the bed to a flat position. If the patient is on a gurney, lower the back of the gurney so that the patient is in a flat position prior to deploying the fast responder. Once the fast responder has been deployed and the fluids have been connected, it is permissible to reposition the patient to an incline or upright position. However, never during the deployment sequence. The second aspect of the position element of the deployment sequence is the position of the provider relative to the patient. We recommend the provider position themselves at the head of the patient. If the patient is in a hospital bed or gurney, the correct position is as demonstrated. If the patient is on the ground or on a litter, the correct position is as demonstrated. The head of the patient is between the provider's knees, and the provider is working from the head to the manubrium of the patient. This position gives the provider maximum control of the fast responder, keeping perfect alignment with the patient's body and correct orientation to the perpendicular plane of the patient's manubrium. The provider should keep in mind that all work is done on axis and perpendicular to the surface plane of the manubrium. 
it is not recommended that a provider work from the patient's side or use one hand to deploy the fast responder because it diminishes the provider's ability to stay on axis, keeping the fast responder perpendicular to the surface of the manubrium. Once the provider is positioned relative to the patient's head, the next step in the deployment protocol is placement. Before the fast responder is placed on the patient, the provider must remove the locking pin and peel back the adhesive liner as shown. This exposes the adhesive surface of the target foot, so it is important to be aware and not set the fast responder face down and inadvertently adhere gloves, instructions, or other materials to the target foot. Placement refers to the placement of the fast responder on the patient. This element of the deployment sequence is achieved by using the provider's non-dominant hand to locate the patient's sternal notch. You will notice in the demonstration the provider is using the non-dominant hand and is using the thumb to pinpoint the sternal notch. The provider keeps the thumb in position and uses it to align the notched target foot of the fast responder. With the sternal notch identified, the provider aligns the target foot of the fast responder and places the device on the surface, firmly seating the target foot allowing the adhesive surface to hold the fast responder in place, perpendicular to the manubrium. The next P in the deployment sequence is push. The push is the user-applied force necessary to pierce the hard cortical bone of the manubrium and seat the tip of the infusion tube into the bone. Before beginning the push, the provider should hold the fast responder with two hands, with the thumbs aligned side by side and fingers overlapped, dominant hand first and non-dominant hand second. The proper grip is as shown in this video. This grip ensures positive control of the fast responder, allowing the provider to keep user applied force on axis and perpendicular to the manubrium. It also allows for positive even application of controlled insertion of the stylet to seat the tip of the infusion tube. The next element of the deployment sequence is pause. The pause accomplishes two things for the provider. First, it allows the provider to remove the non-dominant hand from the handle of the fast responder and transfer it to the target foot to assist in holding the target foot in place while the device is retracted. Second, the pause serves to remind the provider that the pull element of the deployment protocol must be done on axis, perpendicular to the manubrium and in a controlled manner so as not to disturb or accidentally dislodge the infusion tube. The next element of the deployment protocol is pull. With the provider's non-dominant hand in position on the target foot, the fast responder device is pulled slowly away from the patient on axis back towards the provider. The provider pulls back slowly and carefully to clear the device needle cover and target foot release ring from the connector at the top of the infusion tube and the strain relief hook. Done properly, the pullback element of the deployment sequence will look like this. Immediately following the pullback, the provider can set the fast responder device to the side and remove the anti-buckle from the infusion tube and discard. The remaining fast responder can be discarded following the provider's local protocol for the disposal of sharps. Next in the deployment sequence is preparation for the connection of a fluid bag and line to the infusion tube. It is not unusual for the provider not to see any immediate flash or drainage from the infusion tube. It is common for the tip of the infusion tube to be blocked with tissue or bone material. To confirm proper seating of the tip into the manubrium, an optional technique to clear any obstruction of the infusion tube is to connect a syringe with up to 5 cc of normal saline. Draw back on the syringe to aspirate marrow and quickly push the marrow and saline back through the infusion tube to clear the line. Normally, if conscious, patients experience some level of visceral discomfort in doing this. It is not dangerous, however the procedure does give the patient mild discomfort. Do not remove the syringe immediately after clearing the line unless the fluid bag and line are ready to be connected to the infusion tube. If the line is ready to connect, do so, and then connect the strain relief hook to the hook provided on the surface of the target foot. Done correctly, this procedure will look like this. The final optional element of the deployment sequence is to cover the insertion site, insertion tube, and connection with a protective dome. First, remove the adhesive liner of the protective dome as shown. Then cover the insertion site and infusion tube as shown.
Removal of the infusion tube is to be done by a physician or nurse trained to do so. However, the removal is simple. In order to maximize the successful removal of the metal tip of the infusion tube, the following is recommended. Make sure you have the proper bandage and tape available to cover the insertion site. Disconnect any fluid lines from the infusion tube. Grasp the infusion tube as far down and as close to the metal tip as possible. The tip is embedded partially in the cortical bone and is covered by tissue and skin, but the closer to the tip you grasp, the better the result. It is permissible to fold the exposed infusion tube around your index finger as shown. Pull back in a single fluid motion until the tip is dislodged from the manubrium and is extracted fully intact, still attached to the infusion tube. The metal tip of the infusion tube is engineered to remain firmly attached to the infusion tube. However, if for any reason the tip and tubing are separated, leave the tip in place, cover the insertion site, and have the patient seen by a qualified physician.